Hey, what's going on, man? These are uh, eight different parchments signed by different presidents following the career of one soldier from second lieutenant to brigadier general. OK. So basically, you have some guy's military career, and this is all of his promotions yep. and certificates or whatever he had? We have all his medals here also. OK, and we have lieutenant colonel. And that was under Theodore Roosevelt, along with William Taft being secretary of war. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a big wow factor right there. I came to the uh, pawn shop today to try and sell my military documents that had been signed by different presidents. I'm looking to get at least ten to 12000 I am getting married next summer, and we need to finance this. <laughs> Who was this guy? Uh, this was uh, Lorenzo W. Cook. Second lieutenant in 1866. Andrew Johnson was president then. Some people consider the worst president in the United States history. <laughs> And um, we have U.S. Grant in '68. Yeah. So wasn't Grant like a complete alcoholic or something like that? Oh, oh yeah, he um, he smoked like 20 cigars a day and drank like a quarter, at least a quarter of whiskey a day. Good life. Um, <laughs> but he was a really good president. God, you just have a lot of paperwork here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, this one's neat. Chester A. Arthur, 1883, 92. So we have Benjamin Harrison, uh, McKinley, 1897. And Theodore Roosevelt again, and Taft yeah. again. With the uh, Brigadier is, General. This is Brigadier General. Seems like the guy moved up pretty far through the ranks in the military. Oh, yeah. To actually get to the position of general is pretty rare. This is pretty incredible. There's only been 44 presidents, and this guy has documents signed by seven of them. They seem to be all tied together to one soldier, which makes an interesting story, and that can be a big selling point to collectors. So how much do you want for this stuff? I was thinking about ten to 12000 um, that's a lot of money. Do you mind if I have someone look at all of it? Okay? Not at uh, all. Sometimes secretaries sign their signature on there. I want to see which ones the president's actually signed and she'll know. Okay? Okay. I'm cool with that. This is a tough one to price. I have a pretty good idea what presidential signatures go for, and most medals you can just look up in a book. But as a collection of this guy's entire life, we have something pretty unique here. I just want to know which one of these signatures are real and which aren't, because you know, I just know that presidents, a lot of these were signed by secretaries. It is a question of what we call authorized forgeries, when it's secretarial or stamped or something like that. And that's much more common in times of war when there are a lot of different commissions. So let's take a look at these here and see if they're all authentic. All right, I'm going to pull out my little toy. This is one of my favorite things. <laughs> the value in these documents is all in those signatures. So if they're not real, we're looking at very little. So this one's Benjamin Harrison, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Let me look at the uh, Roosevelt. Theo. Theo. And Taft. Together? Mm hmm Oh, great. That's what you want. Johnson. The main thing I'm looking for here is how the characters are formed, especially if it's a secretarial signature. The characters will be similar to the original, but not quite the same. Another thing that you have is the Secretary of War during Chester Arthur's presidency was Robert Todd Lincoln. That's the only one of Abraham Lincoln's children to survive to adulthood. Uh, so that is pretty interesting. Now, one of these signatures is not real. Okay. Which one? <laughs> the Andrew Johnson. Okay. Johnson notoriously hurt his hand a couple months into his presidency, and he started using a stamp. If you look really closely there, you can see the way that the ink is attaching to the paper. It's a little bit more dotted. There are pieces of white within the ink showing where the stamp didn't press down completely. Okay. So this here is stamped. The good news is that all the rest of them are real. Cool. All I right. like that. So you did pretty well, I mean, given how many that are here. Um, and again, it's not, it's not forged. It's an authorized forgery. All right, so what do you think they're worth? Is it the parts of the whole that's worth more money? The whole. OK. If you have it as a group, it tells a story. And that's what collectors really like is a story. Grand is worth a thousand by itself. The Teddy Roosevelt is worth about 750 by itself. But you put them together with this archive, you have the original tube and everything. You can be looking to up to ten thousand dollars. 
All right, well, thanks, girl. You're the best. You're welcome. Usually you see these documents individually, and they're interesting because they're signed by a president. But in this case, you're following someone's life. And that's really cool because you get to see all the different details of his promotions and the wars they must have served in, and that's what historians love. This stuff takes time to sell. It's valuable, but who do you sell it to? Do you yeah. understand what I'm saying? So, that being said, I will give you five grand. About 65. How about five grand? 62. I am not going to see no money out of this for at least a year. So, if you want the five grand, I got five grand. That's what I could do. I truly believe that you probably bought this for a lot less than that. Deal. All right. Go write him up, son. Oh, my fiance will definitely be happy. I spent $2,000 to get this collection. 5,000 is a great number. It'll get me married. <laughs> <laughs>